camera for you today. Today I have the Petri 7S, or Petri. I, I think Petri sounds better than Petri, but um, anyway, yeah, it's a uh, 1960s vintage uh, rangefinder uh, camera. Um, it's uh, actually a good looking camera. It's in the class of the, uh, the Ashikas, uh, the, uh, the GSN that I just reviewed, and uh, the Canon Canonet QL17 G3. Um, yeah, very popular in the, in the 60s. This is circa 1960. Um, you know, basically when Leica came out with the, uh, the M3, um, you know, that really changed the game as far as uh, range finders were concerned. Like companies were coming out with stuff like this, sort of like even innovating in some ways before Leica. But when Leica came out with the M3, it just kind of it set the standard for everything else going forward. Uh, Petri, you know, tend to con uh, continued to... Uh, sell uh, the rangefinders and um, you know try and compete in the uh, a little bit of the, of the uh, lower end market. Um, definitely a decent quality camera. Not I would say as high quality as the uh, the Canon, um, or in some ways I think it's a, you know on par with the Yashica, maybe a, a little bit uh, below lens quality. I think is I, I'd say it's pretty good. It's it's fairly sharp. Uh, lens on this one. There was two versions of the Petri 7S. There's the uh, 1.8 uh, version and then the uh, the 2.8. I have here the 2.8. 1.8s are, uh, I won't say super rare, but they're harder to find um, and certainly uh, a little bit better for available light shooting. Uh, but the 2.8 is decent, you know, walk around camera um, and uh, they're going to be a bit more inexpensive uh, on the market, I think, than you'll find in the Shika GSN. Um, definitely cheaper than the Canon, um, but I think it's going to get you definitely into the rangefinder game. Uh, one, uh, you know, I would say is sort of an advantage if you know you know you're an, you're an experienced shooter or uh, you want to spend more time working with a camera manually. This is definitely the camera to go for. Um, there really aren't any automatic settings on this camera. It's a manual camera, but what it does have is it has a uh, a, a light meter. And the light meter is uh, a matched meter, so uh, however you set your exposure and shutter speed settings, it's gonna, the meter's going to tell you if you're over or under, um, which is nice. Uh, the Canon and the Yashica are pretty much, the Canon is mostly a, a shutter priority camera. Uh, the Yashica is more aperture priority. Uh, this is just manual, and uh, so, uh, but you do have the metering system, so it, it, it makes it pretty easy. Uh, to, to you know get some good exposures out of the camera um, the, the lens is relatively sharp it's actually a decent lens it's it's not a not a junky lens um, and you know again I always suggest go to flickriver.com punch in Petri uh, 7s see what comes up you're gonna be pleasantly surprised at the a lot of the pictures that come up uh, it's not as you know uh, super contrasty lens it's not bad um, but uh, it's it's Certainly not gonna gonna blow you away, but as far as sharpness is concerned, it's a pretty sharp lens. Uh, you're, you're not going to be disappointed in, in that respect. Um, uh, yeah, so coupled rangefinder. There's some interesting features with the uh, the Petri 2. Um, again, this is the uh, the light meter here uh, on the top of the camera, and there's a uh, under and over um, uh, system uh, for that. And uh, it's what's kind of nice is actually it's powered by um, a selenium cell. Uh, so you don't need batteries for the camera to do anything, which is really nice. So I know, you know, with the Canon uh, QL17 G3, you need batteries. With the Yashiki, you need batteries. With an M3, you don't need batteries, but you don't even have a light meter built in. So it's kind of nice to have the light meter there. Uh, tab focusing here on the side, and it's a fairly short throw, uh, you know, so going from, you know, close to far, or, you know, uh, wherever you need. So you're not, you're not winding your fingers all the way around the barrel of the lens to get, get focused. You can... You know, it's you know, I'd say it's probably about an inch, inch and a half throw, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, it's all metal construction here. Uh, everything uh, I found seems to be uh, metal, uh, so you know it is uh, you know relatively substantial. It's not super heavy camera, but it, you know it's it's you know it's not feather light either. Uh, interesting feature that Petri also put on the camera was this green screen here. Um, and the the, uh, the green uh, is the uh, coincident side of the rangefinder uh, viewing. So basically, what happens is, is you look through the the rangefinder or the viewfinder here, and this superimposes an image on to here. So what happens is, is once you align again your uh, your images, that means you're in focus. What Petri did was they added a green tint uh, to their window, so it's a little bit uh, better visibility. 
uh, lining up, you know, the two uh, the two images, uh, which is kind of nice. And they call it the the green omatic system, I believe was the the name of it. Um, yeah, and the um, the the metering here they call the circle eye system. So you know, everybody needed a cool catchphrase at the time to to sell something, and you know, everybody still does, but. Um, you know, it's, it's, it is a nice camera. It's, it's very decent. I'll give, show you some of the controls here. Uh, this is the rewind lever on it here. Uh, you know, it's all metal construction. Again, it's, you know, really no cheap plastic on here. Uh, metal, uh, shutter button. Uh, the winder is kind of nice. It's not an actual lever on top or, uh, below. It's, it's more of a slotted lever going through. Um, and it's a very short throw. So you can wind pretty quickly, uh, from shot to shot. A uh, little uh, half moon window here for your uh, your frame count or your uh, you know how many how many pictures you've gone through your your shutter uh, actuations. Um, it's not a hot shoe; it's a cold shoe, so um, <clears throat> not really much in the way of options uh, for flash that way. I don't see a PC port on here, so yeah, there may not be too much in the way of flash options uh, with this camera. I, 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 I you know I, I don't really see much going on there, so. Um, and if I am wrong, if this is a hot shoe, it's very well possible. I don't believe it is. It doesn't look like there's really any contacts here. So, um, but uh, it's just, I think it's just more of an accessory shoe than anything else. <clears throat> so the, again, on the front of the camera, you have around here and around the, uh, the lens itself is the selenium uh, cells, which gather the light and activate the light meter. The uh, lens here in the center, on the edge here of the camera, on the outside, this is your uh, ASA or, uh, or, or what they have listed as the DIN settings. Um, so ASA, so 400 speed film or 200 speed. And you know, back in the day, you know, it was you know if you're shooting black and white, you, you're generally shooting with lower ISO. So 400 is the highest this goes to. That may be a limitation for uh, for a lot of you. Um, but you know, again, it's good. You know, something to know. Um, actually, there's a looks like a flash sync port on this. Anyway, so I'll update here whether what, what the deal with the flash is. I don't use a lot of a uh, lot of flash, so it's, it's not generally a concern for me. Uh, the second ring here is the uh, your aperture setting, so going from 2.8, and then it uh, tops out at 16 f16 right here. Oh, actually, here's the flash port. Sorry, it is there, so you can uh, you can run your PC uh, cable from here up to your uh, PC controlled flash. Uh, up there, and this is the the flash sync uh, switch here. So it goes to X for the flash, and then you switch switch it down for just uh, for manual mode. So, and then I assume it syncs now at uh, 60 because that's in red. So you have a flash sync at uh, 60. Um, anyway, so that's good to know. Uh, and then here again, here's your focusing tab. Again, you know, there's some little details here that are not, you know premium looking. This is just basically a bent piece of metal with a knurled knob on it that's actually just screwed to the to the barrel here. So it, it doesn't look real sharp. It's not like integrated in real nicely. It's just, you know, a little bent piece of metal. <laughs> so, but you know, listen, it does the job. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it does what you need it to do. That's that. Um, so again, and then, uh, so this little tab here adjusts your ISO setting here. The next one again is your shutter speed. Um, which uh, clicks around and goes from a uh, bulb up to one five hundredth of a second. So yeah, so again, you know, no no huge st uh, staggering specs here, but uh, but definitely decent. The one thing I did find is the ASA ring here, or the uh, the, the film speed ring, doesn't uh, have any real detents in it or anything like that. And what I do, what happens is I find myself adjusting the um, uh, the shutter speed settings, I end up moving the ring around. So that's, I, again, I don't know if, if it's this camera. I haven't been through a lot of Petri's, uh, the 7S. This is, I found this one. I, I was intrigued by it. I actually, I really like the look of the camera. I think it's very sharp, very classic 60s um, uh, camera. And, uh, you know, it actually does have a decent viewfinder. It's not huge, uh, but there are some uh, outlines, you know, for your, for your frame lines, etc. Um, but yeah, like I said, I find myself moving the, uh, the ASA setting, which, w which will affect your meter readings, um, you know, uh, in, in relation to your shutter speed and your aperture. So, um, again, I don't know if that's something unique to this camera or not, but, uh, it's just kind of in the wrong spot all the time. Um, so anyway, but there is a nice, uh, focusing scale on the front. Uh, so, and using their, um, 
their label here, Petri 7S, that, that's your arrow as to if you just wanted to uh, measure meters or feet, you know, how far your subject is, you can sort of pre-focus and then uh, shoot. Um, there is no um, distance scale uh, that, I, that I can really see, so, um, you know, oh well, you know, it, 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 again, I think it was more of a casual camera to, you know, just go out and get some shots with, has the meter built in, which is really nice. Um, opening the camera here, there's a small tab on top here, and the camera just opens right up right there. Pretty easy load, just take it, feed the film into the slot, close it up, wind on, and you're ready to go. Um, Yep, so it's, it sounds a little thin. Like, it doesn't sound like it's really solid camera. Um, you know, there's like, you know, when you wind it, there's like kind of like this uh, chunk and you can kind of hear the hollowness of the camera. Um, you know, again, not necessarily a bad thing, you know, uh, but uh, it just, it certainly, I, I would say, adds to the character of the camera a little bit. Um, it really is just a fun little, camera, you know, to, to walk around with, you want to shoot, you want to experiment with exposure, uh, stuff like that, uh, experiment with, uh, you know, shutting your shutter, shutter speeds and your aperture. Um, it does have a screw for a uh, remote release, so you can put a remote le release right in there uh, and good to go. You got your strap lugs. Um, on the bottom is your rewind release, that's the button right there, and it does have a tripod mount uh, right here. So, uh, again, really kind of a sharp looking camera. Uh, again, nice feature with the light meter built in. Um, you get your 500, so, you know, 500 of a second and F2.8. So, you know, primarily I'd bring this thing, you know, outside, you know, uh, this isn't a low light indoor camera, uh, my recommendation. And you don't even have the option of going for, you know, 800 speed film or anything like that, any kind of high speed film to, to kind of work with that. So, you know, it, it is what it is, and it's not bad. It's you know, it's not a spectacular camera, but it's 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 a very decent, uh, good way, good entry again into rangefinders. You know, you're going to find a lot of these around. Uh, I think I paid fifteen or twenty dollars for this, which is you know, you know, it's okay. But you know, you're going to see them around for you know twenty, twenty five, thirty. You know, but honestly, it's cheaper than the Ashikas that you're going to find around unless you get one of those at a you know yard sale or a. a um, um, a, uh, a flea market or something like that, but you know this is I think it just is a good place to start as the Yashica. So anyway, that's it. Uh, you know, I like the camera. I, I would give it a thumbs up for an entry level camera. I wouldn't say you know say if you have you know the Canon uh, uh, QL17 G3. I wouldn't say sell that, buy the Petri. I wouldn't you know if you come across a Petri, you're looking for a range finder, not a bad way in. Good place to start. Uh, cool camera, looks great on the shelf, uh, relatively usable, the viewfinder is relatively usable. Uh, it's not, not a huge viewfinder, but again, it's passable, uh, and I say that even uh, as a person wearing glasses. So um, you do have your flash option, which we just discovered, <laughs> and um, I'm sorry I didn't know anything about that uh, to start, but again, like I said, I don't really use flash, uh, you know, for just, you know, my random shooting, so anyway. Um, so that's that, uh, you know, decent quality construction, not spectacular, all metal, uh, which is nice. And, uh, you know, feature wise, you know, I, I'd, I'd say it's, it's okay. So I'm going to give it, uh, a, you know, a moderately enthusiastic th thumbs up. I, I like the camera. It's kind of fun. I might take it out, uh, shoot a little bit with it. Maybe I'll give it to a friend if we're going to go out shooting and they haven't tried a rangefinder before. I might say, Hey, try this. Um, see what you think. And, uh, but yeah, you know, it's cheap enough where, you know, you can pick one up and, you know, it's not going to really hurt your wallet. And uh, it's kind of a nice camera just to have in your collection. And it looks definitely cool. So, anyway, uh, that's it. BrianOldCamReview.com. Uh, please subscribe, comment, thanks. Um, I appreciate everybody who's watching. You guys are awesome. Thanks. And